is the governor, Mike DeWine, had put out a police reform proposal. Now you're proposing legislation yourself to also implement police reform across the state. Well, thank you for asking that question. And, um, you know, I haven't seen the language that he's actually proposing. So I always like to have the opportunity to see the language because kind of, um, as I have a say, the devil's in the details. <laughs> so um, I would, you know, first like to have that opportunity to be able to look at that. Uh, but currently right now, um, I don't per se have uh, a one particular piece of legislation that I have introduced at this point. I'm looking at a couple of things um, around this space and talking with some of my colleagues um, around that um, area. So I think they're, I would say, stay tuned. <laughs> As they always say um, in the TV land, um, there could be those opportunities out there. Um, that I could have some things coming uh, forth, but I do know that members within uh, my side of the aisle have introduced um, a couple of pieces of legislation and that we will be um, bringing those out here in the coming days. So excited to uh, be working on um, you know, my own pieces, but also looking um, to be you know, supportive and working alongside my colleagues that have already introduced legislation. What do you think makes police reform accountability legislation so crucial following the death of George Floyd? Well, and unfortunately, you know, Jade, that's a great question, but unfortunately, we shouldn't have had to come to an instance of George Floyd to bring this uh, up front and into the public. Uh, so, you know, we really should have been having these conversations before. But, you know, I do want to take one moment, though, to, you know, I know that our Toledo Police Department here under the direction of Chief uh, Kroll has, uh, you know, he's been really open and, with our community. And I can remember, you know, in uh, you know, some instances this has happened and in the area, the first thing that they did was said, hey, let's, let's release that video. Let's get that out there um, because a lot of conversations around that. So, you know, I'm very supportive of what he has done and being open and working with the community. So I actually think that in some regards, maybe I'm a little biased uh, for our local police department, but um, and under the direction of uh, Chief Crawl. But I think that uh, we really show the, um, you know, we're really kind of a model in some ways in Toledo for what others could be doing um, throughout. So, um, but we still have a lot of work to do though. And I think that, you know, when we're gonna talk about police reform though, that we also need to have those conversations with our local, our local areas. And that's something that I um, did over the summer as I sat down uh, with, the, uh, with the Toledo Policemen's um, Patrolmen's Association and, and have had conversations um, with them. And I really enjoy the opportunity that they gave me uh, to sit down at their table, not my table, but their table to have those conversations. So um, as a legislator, I always like to be really informed on um, both sides of the issues as well. And so I really do appreciate those opportunities they had given me. Transparency is something that activists and some police departments have promoted, but haven't really been, uh, you know, practicing it. So what do you think is the best way for police departments to practice transparency? And what do you think is the best way to make sure that that happens? Well, you know, transparency is a very large word that um, gets thrown out there and doesn't always um, really come to fruition. But I, you know, so I will, I, maybe I should start with, you know, my trans, my definition of transparency is just being upfront and out there. And it could, you know, sometimes it's, a, it's um, some tough conversations that you have to have, uh, but be willing to come to the table and have those tough conversations. And uh, again, I, you know, I just, I'll go back to Chief Crawl, just being very transparent on, you know, for example, instances that's happened here and they were, they were quick to um, release um, those body cam uh, footages of what happened. Um, and so I, you know, it's, it's, you have to, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's hard, it's hard conversations, but you, you have to be willing to have those hard conversations. But do you believe that there should be consequences, even for minor infractions, 
Or is that something that you view as a case by case basis? Well, I'd have to really, you know, have a, you know, what is that case that, you know, particular case that you're talking about. Um, but, you know, I'm going to kind of go back to the governor a little bit here, though, because when the shooting took place uh, down in, in Dayton, you know, that was that was horrific of what happened. You know, the governor came out. He had said a lot of words and, you know, uh, said a lot of things he was going to do. And I think, you know, and the, and the crowd said, do something. And he said, I'm going to do something. Well, I'm sitting here looking at my watch and my clock and my uh, my calendar and uh, many days and, um, you know, a year has passed, you know, since, and plus has passed since that's happened. So, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you can say a lot of words, but you have to put actions behind those words. And so um, I think that our, our community here locally, I think our state is waiting for something um, those words to come to fruition, but unfortunately, uh, with uh, the legislators, uh, that has not happened. I know that many of my colleagues in the last General Assembly had put uh, numerous um, pieces of legislation up, and you have to remember the you know the governor doesn't run the House and the Senate. It's ran from the Senate President, and it's ran by the Speaker and those committee chairs and what have you. Uh, so what happened in the last General Assembly, there was numerous pieces of legislation. Uh, they might have given them a sponsorship test, uh, opportunity to testify on their legislation as a legislator, but that's where it laid. It just laid on the table and never um, got heard. Now there's been others that have been introduced in this General Assembly uh, from our side of the aisle, and they have not had opportunities to have hearings. But there's been other legislators on the other side of the aisle um, that have brought up legislation that has had hearings. And I sit in the state and local um, committee down in the state house. This is where we are in this general assembly are hearing, um, you know, those proposals. And so we would, you know, my colleagues would rather, you know, talk about things like having June 14th as Donald Trump flag day or having, you know, legislation that we're going to be probably hearing pretty soon about renaming a pond after um, the ex-president. Um, instead of really taking up meaningful legislation, or a, or we've actually had hearings on, um, you know, federal government um, legislation that's been taking place. So want to pass a House resolution to, to oppose it. Um, so I really am, you know, really um, disturbed that uh, we here in the great state of Ohio um, don't have the, uh, won't take the wherewithal to bring those pieces of legislation up and have robust debate and, um, and then come to a conclusion on the House floor through a vote. So, you know, what do we do next could possibly be the question. And I would always say, you know, contact your legislators, you know, we have to, we do need to take some um, measures within this state, or we're just, you know, there's, there's, we're just not going to, you know, get to a place that we can have those um, robust debates and really us as being legislators being transparent with our, um, with our constituents. A 15 year old girl was shot in Columbus by Columbus police after getting into an altercation with another female. Do you believe that that officer is justified in his actions? Well, and you know, I was down there in Columbus this past week when this unfortunate event had happened. Actually, uh, before this unfortunate event had happened, uh, we got the verdict results um, that came in in regards to um, George Floyd. So while um, we were, you know, I was talking with my colleagues and was happy to see that the guilty, guilty, guilty came out. Um, but then soon after, you know, really quick after that, this, then this unfortunate event happened with this 16-year-old. Um, and there's been, and I've seen, you know, different videos when I was down in Columbus. I saw the, you know, the um, opportunity of people to express themselves in dismay about this through the pro very, very pre peaceful protest. Um, and so I think that there's uh, more information that we have to have that comes out and uh, we'll be watching that very closely. And so, you know, I, you know, I have, you know, I'm really, you know, at, at first glance, you kind of, you know, when it first, the, the first footage came out, um, 
you know, understanding that police officers are trained um, to, you know, protect and serve everyone. And what I was glad to see through those videos that there was a, an immediate response to render first aid to the individual that was shot. But back to your question though, is that I think that there is, you know, there's still more that's going to be coming forward. And so I would, you know, like to, to reserve my thoughts on that. But I would say that, you know, I'm, you know, anytime that a young life is taken um, or any life is taken, um, it does sadden me. And uh, do I think there's more that we could do? Yes, I think there's more things that um, we can do through legislation. I think that there's things that, you know, are, I, I'm sure that our police officers have, uh, our safety forces have some, some ideas there and would be very willing to have those conversations again around their table and um, come to some common sense um, gun solutions. Representative Lisa Sebecki, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so very much, Jane, for having me today. I appreciate it.